What is up you guys? Welcome back to the 12 days of Wolfness. This is day number six and currently I'm up 3767 through six sessions. So I'm absolutely cruising. I'm gonna be giving all that money back away to you guys. All you have to do to be eligible is like the video, be a subscriber of the channel. You also have to comment the keyword I'll give to you at the end of the video. For tonight's video, we're in Atlantis, the Bahamas. I got brought out here for a GG WSOP tournament. Gonna play some cash games, win some money, give it back to you guys, and uh, stay tuned to the end to find out what to comment down below. Let's get right into the action. Let's go! Into the 2-5 we go for $1,000 in first hand. We look down at King Jack suited from early position. I make it $15 to go and Floron from the cutoff. He three bets me to 50 bucks. Flop comes queen nine deuce with two hearts. Pretty great for me. I flop myself a gutter to the straight flush. I check it over to Floron in flow and he fires out very small for $20 and I have a comment to say to him about that. 20? Yeah. So there's $100 in there. So small. I punish him by raising it up to $80. Having the gutter to the straight flush is pretty nice. We can get a lot of hands to fold like ace, king, king, 10, all of that stuff, just clean out some equity. But uh, he decides to put in the call, no worries. The ace of clubs on the turn is a great card to continue firing. For instance, if I had a hand like ace, 10 of hearts, ace, five of hearts, I now made top pair and I would go for a chunky size value bet. So with my gutter to the straight flush, I fire out for 175 and that gets the job done. Floron folds his cards. We're taking down a $400 pot straight out of the gate. Hand number two, we upgrade to the ladies. I'm under the gun and make it $15 to go. The cutoff and the big blind both put in the call. And look at that player profile from Lucas in the cutoff. What a snazzy European there. Love to see it and I also love seeing this flop. 10-9-5 rainbow. The action checks over to me from the big blind. In between two opponents, I usually start with a check. Shout out to my poker coach Alvin. All of his links to get better at poker are down below. Lucas takes the bait and fires out for $40, and I didn't check this flop to fold, obviously. I could go for a check raise, though he's still going to have the 10-9 suited and pocket fives and pocket nines. So instead, I just put in the call off the turn, which comes the ace of hearts. Should be better for me than him, so when I check it over to Lucas, little surprise, he goes for a two-thirds pot size bet. But I'm going nowhere. I underplayed my hand thus far. Have to put in the 80 bucks. And the river card is pretty great. It comes the ace of spades. Before I just snap check it over to Lucas and see what he does, I actually think about going for a very small sizing on this river. The logic is it kind of makes Lucas play his hand face up. For instance, if I go like 20% here and Lucas raises me, well, he probably has either a very strong ace, a set of tens or nines that turned into a boat on the river, or the only bluffs I could see are missed hearts or maybe a hand like queen jack or a eight seven. But if I check it over to Lucas, he could continue betting here and put me in a really tough spot with my pair of queens. So I actually decide to donk block into him here for $30 and make him play his hand face up. And this perplexes him. He thinks about it for a while for ultimately folding his cards. Yes, he folded for the $30 bet into the $300 pot. A little 10 percenter there, got the job done. We're gonna take down that pot with our two pair. Hand number three is fun. It's against our Canadian buddy, Ryan, who we met down in Houston. He makes it $15 to go from the button. Ace Jack suited is good enough for a three bet in my books. I decided to go 60 bucks. Probably could even size up to like 75. I wouldn't blame anyone for doing that. And uh, Ryan decides to put in the call defense his button open off to a flop we go which comes ace queen nine with one diamond pretty great for me I'm out of position against Ryan probably half pot seems appropriate here so around 60 bucks let's see what I decide to do I go a little bit smaller to the tune of $40 and Ryan doesn't think about it for too long before putting in the call bringing in a connected card the king of clubs all options are on the table here. I could check or bet. He now improves on the turn with hands like king nine suited and king queen, both of which are definitely in his range. However, I'm gonna bet here and let him raise me and tell the story he has a better hand, but until then, I'm gonna go for some value bets and fire out for half the size of the pot. Ryan's not done with the hand just yet. He didn't fly all the way from Canada down to the Bahamas. 
to fold his hand for 100 bucks, did he? Absolutely not. He puts in the call, and the river card gives us two pair on the jack of clubs. However, it puts a one-liner to the straight, any 10. So ace 10, queen 10, king 10 all have a straight now. Not the best card. Do we check it over to Ryan and also give him some rope to bluff? Or do we bet ourselves, and then if he raises us, we'd be in a weird spot and then evaluate on that decision? I decided to go for a small sizing here. I still think I can get called by queen nine suited, king queen, king jack, all of that good stuff. And if he raises me, then I guess we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. And I guess that bridge is right now. He decides to raise me, but it's not a large sizing. It's $265. So let's do a little bit more math here. Yes, we do that once in a while. It's only $140 more for me to call. And if I put in the call, the pot will be 935. So we're getting 5.7 to one and uh, roughly have to be right here only 15% of the time. Do I think I'm good here 15% of the time? It's just tough. I mean, two pair is pretty good. Is he ever raising king queen suited or king jack on a four liner to the 10? I mean, that's a little bit ambitious. He could have pocket nines or pocket jacks, I suppose. More likely than that, it's going to be a lot of tens that Ryan shows us. But just given the pot odds here, 5.7 to 1, I can't argue with that price. I put in the call and Ryan shows us the bad news. Pocket nines puts us in a tough spot. And he's going to take down that $900 pot with some thin value on the river. Nice hand, Ryan. I was trying to do this guy. <laughs> this guy. That's just a real deal. All right, let's battle with queen jack offsuit from the hijack. There's an open to 15. A few callers and I put in the call as well, giving me a good flop, which gives me an open-ended straight draw, king 10, six rainbow. Action checks over to me and I decide to go for a bet. No one's expressed interest in the pot so far, so I fire out for $30 and only the UTG player puts in the call. Under the gun checks over to me on the three of diamonds and I'm gonna size up here now and go for 80 bucks, try to get him to fold any of his 10X, pocket nines, pocket sevens, but he's a little sticky, puts in the call and the river card comes the queen of hearts. When the under the gun checks over to me on the river, I take the showdown value that I now have, check behind and we are gonna win versus pocket jacks. So we kind of got lucky there on the river and the ace, nine or queen gives us the best hand. We spike one of those cards and uh, yeah, happy holidays, you guys. We are scooping in another pot. All right, we got a battle back. We have 900 in our stack. Ace 10 offsuit now from the big blind. Hijack makes it 20. Instead of three betting, I decide to call. We flop ourselves top pair on an ace four deuce board. And I decide to check call the hijack when he fires out for $25. Turn comes the jack, I check it over to him once again. The action goes check, check, giving me two pair on the river, the 10 of diamonds. Gonna keep playing it like I have pocket fives, maybe a hand like king four suited, five four, something like that. Let's see if he can put some money in the middle and we can take down a nice size pot here. He bloats it up, he fires out for $75. And now I don't wanna just snap call here and not get extra value. I made two pair and that's pretty hard to do. Sure, he could have king queen and he could have spiked the river, but uh, yeah, that's the situation we'll have to cross if we get to it. He could still have hands like jack 10 suited. He could have a hand like king jack going for thin value. Just a lot of things we can still get value from. So I decide to raise him up and uh, he snap folds. So yeah, no more value to be gotten there, but still taking down a nice size pot and uh, we're back to even on the session. King 10 offsuit now from the small blind. I make it $20 to go over a limper who puts in the call leading us off to a flop which comes 10 high. Out of position against his interestingly uh, wide range, I go for a check. He checks behind and the deuce of diamonds seems like a pretty clean card to continue betting on. I fire out for 35, limper folds, easy game. A beautiful hand now, king queen of spades from the low jack. I make it 15 and we get two customers. We flop ourselves an open-ended straight flush draw with the ace of spades giving us a royal. Usually in between two opponents, I start with a check, but this board is kind of spicy. I want to build the size of it up now. I fire out for $15 and both players are losers. They fold. They're not even going to let me see if I hit my straight flush. So I plead with the dealer to run the board out. She tries to get permission from the floor who says they can't do it. Look at that. We almost flop a royal and I can't even see if we would have hit it. But uh, oh well, I guess the $62 consolation prize will have to do. Right, two more hands to go. I look down at the jiggities now from the big blind. Low jack makes it 15. Sky decides to three bet out of the small blind to 65. Love that sizing there, Sky. 
And uh, what do you think of this sizing here when I'm gonna come in for the cold four bet to 175? This guy doesn't like it. He mucks his cards after a little bit of thought, but uh, cold four bets are usually always pretty strong. And I think tens would probably be at the bottom of my range there. So uh, good fold from him there, but we're gonna take down $80 in profit. See, I don't want to stack you. And then I also don't want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to get stacked you. And that ladies and gentlemen will bring us into the last hand of the night. I find myself on the beautiful button here with King 10 of diamonds under the gun makes it 15. Lucas puts in the call and I make it $60. You really want to put pressure in these spots when you see an open and a call. Kind of looks a little squeezy, but King 10 suited is uh, two fifths of a royal. We're gonna make it 60 and Lucas puts in the call with those snazzy glasses. An ace 10 three board is what we're gonna to have to work with here. One diamond and a pair in a backdoor straight draw. Lucas checks it over to me, I fire out for $40 and he waves the white flag. That is gonna wrap it up here from Atlantis. We play one more session tomorrow from Atlantis, but as for now, we're gonna rack up our chips, head over to the cage, Bring it to the outro to see how we did. Well, we went six for six, you guys. I made $90, bringing our total to $38.57. We're halfway through and on pace for nearly $8,000. At the end of the 12 days, I'm going to pick seven lucky winners and divide that money equally and give them a buy-in for a live stream in Houston at Champions Club. Your flight will be paid for, you have two nights in a hotel. Gonna be a pretty sick experience. The only thing you need to do in this video is comment down below something about a grindy session, something boring in the poker session, Kind of like what happened in this one here, playing with a lot of euros, a lot of fun, but it wasn't the most action-packed experience. Want to give a huge shout out to my poker coach, Alvin, for taking my game to the next level. All of the links are down below, including the one to my pocket sevens hat. Get that while it's hot. I'm going to catch you tomorrow in day number seven. When it comes onto your news feed, you have to click on it and comment what I tell you at the end of the video to be eligible. I'm going to check all 12 days, but as for now, Wolf Miss Day 6 out, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Poker?